like to thank them for the great uh, worship this morning. And normally I'm always wanting to turn down. I'm, I have a problem usually with the music being too loud, but uh, thanks for it for uh, turning that up. It was, it was good. Appreciate that. It's been a, a, a different week uh, for us. Uh, most of you know that uh, Lynn and Emily went down and uh, last uh, Sunday. And then uh, we ended up visiting them. And then Tuesday we heard of uh, Dan's uh, major stroke uh, while he was in La Grande. And uh, so it's really taken a lot of us. Um, really kind of set us back. Well, I don't think that set us back, but really got to, to some of us. Dan was very close to us. Uh, he's had a, a, got a great motorcycle ministry with Soul Zone. We always appreciate him and Soul Zone and all that they do. Uh, Dan's also been doing a lot of work at Syringa. And so we just lift him up in prayer because, we, you know, just to get back to his ministry and stuff that he does. And just to return to full. What's that, Rich? Can't hear me? Yeah, no. Oh, okay, sorry. Use the microphone? <laughs> Uh -oh. Let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Jimmy, put a march for me. We don't give up your day. That better? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good argument again here. But I'm just saying that uh, you know Dan has just been very special to all of us, and, and especially myself. And we just really want to lift him up in prayer because of the work he's doing and the ministry he has going on. That uh, just to see him return back to his ministries in full health to to uh, to this. Um, Syringa House, that, uh, the, the work that him and Loretta have been doing with the, the young ladies there has been amazing to see them leading some of these girls to the Lord. And we just want to see him continue his ministries there. And all the other great ministries he's doing with the, and the bike side of, of things and the, the ride he got going on Friday nights and how that's been growing. A lot of times we're having 30 bikes show up. And it's just such a blessing to see a lot of people there that some, you know, know the Lord. There's some there that, that really don't or, or need to get closer to the Lord and to see how you can have fun being part of the Lord and, and still out having fun and enjoying life. And uh, the ministry that they have going on there is just amazing. So we just, again, just really want to lift Dan up. Uh, just find it difficult sometimes just continually seeking the Lord and, and getting into the Lord's Word when it seems like Satan has so many different things out there trying to distract us, to pull us away from the Word. You know, and it's so important to be in the Word that that's our sword. And to, to have the Word there with us. Um, so with that, let me find my papers here. I know uh, we just sent out... Uh, the, she sent out the sword uh, quite a bit, and she sent out uh, different uh, verses along with prayer requests and stuff on the email distribution list that she has. And one thing that she put on there was uh, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And I just thought, you know, it just this week has really been weighing on me, and a lot of times we forget, we get so caught up, and to put on the armor, the full armor of the Lord, that it's really important that with things going on and how Satan wants to distract us and how you know strongholds in our lives uh, driving down the road and just having people cut you off and whatever you know there's just so many things going on it always remember and put the Lord first and, and seeking the Lord and a lot of times it gets very difficult. So I'm going to read the scripture and we'll go back through it. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. 
For we are not fighting against flesh and blood, enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor, so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will stand and be standing firm. Stand your grounds putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes with the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is in the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and for everyone on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Sometimes it gets really difficult and you have the devil attacking you. And putting on the armor, it just helps you being focused in the Lord and in the Word. The first part it was talking about the, the powers or the evil powers and stuff, and it talks about that a lot in the Gospel. And in Jesus' name, we have dominion over that. And the power of the blood, we can stand against the evil one. And we have to remember that, not to be fearful, because if we're fearful, we're taking the power out of the Lord's hands. At all times we need to, to remember that through the power of the blood, through Jesus Christ, we have the power. And, and we can't just step back and let Satan run run his way. That we need to remember that we have the power in the name of the Lord to stand firm. So always remember that don't don't let the devil get to you. You know, yeah, don't give me more credit than it's due. Because remember, you have the power, the power of the Lord, the power of the blood. In Mark 16, 17 through 18, it says, The miracle signs accomplish those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name, and they will speak in new languages, they will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to make peace with their hands on the, excuse me, they will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. We are not to fear the evil one that are given, the evil one are given that, excuse me, we are not to fear the evil one that Satan power over us. We are to have faith in the Lord. We're not to give the evil one any help to recognize him. We Jesus Christ has the power. And not that we go out to drink poison or to, you know, handle snakes, poison snakes, but if we're out there doing God's work, there's a lot of cases where missionaries have been out and have been by poisonous snakes and it has no impact. Paul went a shipwrecked carrying wood and he lays it down and he's bitten by the poisonous snake and they're sitting there watching him. Nothing happens. He has the hand of the Lord on him. The safety on him. And just remember, you know, as we're praying, as we, as we get on the bikes to ride, we pray for the Lord to hand the protection upon us at all times keep people alert around us. Even when we're driving our cars, you see people texting beside you. You know, it doesn't matter if you're in a car or on a bike, walking across the street. We need Jesus with us at all times. The bell of truth keeps us from giving in to the, the world's belief. Compare your beliefs and actions to the truth of the Word of God. Father, I thank you for creating within me a wise and discerning heart so that I am able to distinguish between right and wrong. Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth 
of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. We always need to have a discerning heart. Look to the truth of the Lord. That there's so many lies and stuff that's going around now. And even, you know, back when we read the New Testament, how Paul would always have to deal with the lies and stuff that was happening within the church back then. And we look today as no different. Satan's always in there trying to stir things up, trying to, to lie to people about what's going on in the church or, or what someone thinks about them. And we need to, to turn to the Lord and, and look for the truth. That Satan had a way of twi twisting the truth just a little bit so it sounds so much like what's in the Bible. But we really need to be in the Word so we know what is and praying for discernment. The helmet of self, excuse me, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is from the God or from good news about Christ. This good news tells us how God makes us right in His sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scripture says, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. Did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the <coughs> penalty of our sins? As we accept the Lord, we are putting our sins on the cross and taking His righteousness. The righteous person faces many troubles. Just because we have come to the Lord doesn't mean that we're not going to be challenged with difficulties. We're always going to be tested and challenged. And we need to turn to the Lord and always stay with the Lord. Because there's always a way out. The Lord always gives us a way. Turning to Him and looking for His way. And being in His Word. It's always such a blessing to, to be there. <coughs> Feet prepared with the, the Gospel of Peace. The Gospel of Peace is being right <coughs> with God and being content in troubled times. Jesus said, peacemakers were blessed. In, G in Christ Jesus, I have peace and pursue peace with all men. I am a minister of reconciliation, proclaiming the good news of the gospel. Lord, help me to let go of bitterness, indignation, the wrath, passion, rage, bad temper, and resentment, anger, animosity. For God wants us to love our enemies and to even pray for them. Whenever we have bitterness or unforgiveness or fear in our hearts, it just it's hard to get the blessing of the Lord poured upon us. That if we don't forgive our enemies, that the Lord can't forgive us. If we want our sins forgiven, we have to forgive those who sin against us. And that's a lot easier said than done. I mean, a lot of times we got to, I, mean, I have to pray a lot for that, to, to, for God to give me the strength, to give me the power to forgive them. It, it, it's difficult. It's not something that's easy. Living and walking in the Lord is nothing easy about it. You know, it, it's the hardest thing to do. You know, but the gift is free. But to walking in the righteousness is very difficult. It's a struggle all the time. That's why we always got to be in the Word and praying and seeking the Lord. Because there's everything trying to get in the way of it. Satan is always trying to, to block you, stop you, give you something else to do or thinking about. And trying to keep the focus on Jesus at all times. Just truly seeking and listening to Him when He speaks to you and stepping out in faith and obedience to the Lord. 
you know, it's one thing we pray about something, uh, you know, whatever, a job. And it's like, oh, Jesus, anything but this job. And that's the doors he opened. That's the doors he wants you to take. I was like, no, I don't want to do that job. I don't want to, you know, I don't want that ministry. And Jesus just keeps saying, no, this is the ministry I have for you. This is the job I have for you. This is the work I have for you. You need to step out in faith and obedience to the Lord and do the job that He has before you. The helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation be, by believing that Jesus Christ died for your sins and rose again. This is a very important part of our protection as we need to focus on the Lord and not the lives of this world. We need to make sure what we listen to, read, watch, and do is honoring the Lord. Hallelujah. Again, it's back to you know everything we do, we listen to, watch. We need to be focused on the Lord. It's so easy with everything out there, the TV, news, everything to get distracted. And just remembering constantly to put the Lord first and to seek the Lord. I think, you know, we read some of these prayers in, in, the, in the Bible and there's so much to them when you stop and think about what they're really saying to us and everything comes back, you know, the, the, the faith, salvation, the Lord, and keeping Him first. The shield of faith. Faith is sure that God will keep His promise. Faith in God protects you when you are trampled, excuse me, tempted to doubt. Without faith, we have nothing. With faith, even as small as a mustard seed, we can move the mountains or uproot the mulberry tree. Nothing would be impossible. It's faith in healing. Faith in the Lord is true and He's always going to be there for you. Submitting to the Lord and turning everything over to Him. And faith that He's there to take care of you and protect you. Hallelujah. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. God's Word is our offensive weapon. This is why we need to be in the Word, Scripture. We need to know the truth of Scripture. So when somebody tries to twist the truth, we're prepared. Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Forty days as he's in the wilderness with Satan twisting the truth. And if we don't know the word or the truth, if we don't have discernment, have the bell of the, the truth, the discernment, it's really hard to know when someone is telling you a half truth. We really have to be in the word and know what, what it says. Be prepared because it says in the last days, we're going to have a lot of false prophets, a lot of false teachers, of people twisting the word, people just to tickle the air and, and not telling you what you need to know. So we really have to be prepared. So when the devil comes to attack you, that being in the word, you're, you're prepared and, and you know the truth and you can come back at him and tell him and stand firmly in the Lord. 1 Peter 2.1 so get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. We need to grow in God's Word. At all times, we need to grow in the Lord. Grow in the relationship with Jesus. It's not just Sunday. It's all, all week long. Yes, we need to be living for the Lord. We're not just to be a weekend or a, an hour block or two, you know, two hours. We, we do Sunday and then we do Bible study. We need to be studying all week long. We need to be praying. There's so many distractions to keep us from it. How can we have a blessed life if we're not giving Lord our all? And putting other things in front of Jesus. Jesus is very jealous 
God. He wants us to give Him our all. He wants us to submit to Him. If we want blessings poured upon us, we need to submit to Jesus. We need to be in His Word. We need to be studying. We need to be praying for people. I just, you know, looking at this week and all the prayers and stuff going out for Dan, everyone, you know, that has heard has been in, in prayer. We see, you know, it's like every day we're, we're looking. Most of it's been updated on Facebook is where we've been finding a lot of information. Um, right now the family's not, a, they've asked for people not to come up and see him. And so the only way we can tie in is through Facebook. Uh, or calling other people that are tied in that way. Just trying not to burden the family, you know, with a lot of calls and, and messages. But just to let them know that we're here and we're loving them and lifting them up. But sometimes when you're praying, you don't know what to pray for. You know, and getting into, into, into prayer groups and, and praying with each other and praying for the Lord's will and praying to, to what to pray for sometimes. It, it's just asking God and then listening. Lord, what, what should I be praying for? Lord, give me your wisdom on what to pray for. And the Lord opens a lot of doors. He gives you wisdom. Because it says you ask for wisdom and it will, the Lord will give you wisdom. Ask Him and then listen. And then step out in obedience. It's so, you know, we get caught up into everything going on that we, we always turn to the Lord, and, you know, even if we're praying or, or raising requests up to Him. But do we stop and just listen? And listen to what the Lord's saying? I mean, really stop and listen. Seeking the Lord. Deep down, we're, you know, so much get caught up into this microwave age where we have no patience. When we have to wait for a microwave to warm our leftovers, and we click the button for two minutes, and we're standing there tapping our foot, tapping, maybe it's just me, I don't know, I shouldn't be speaking for, for we, but, you know, I, I just look at, you know, the patience that we have, and we want everything instantly. We don't want to sit and listen to the Lord. And then when the Lord answers us, Oh Lord, no, I don't really like what you're saying there. I, I, I want to do it this way. I, I, I don't like what you're telling me. To, to, when we listen and we ask for it, we need to step out in obedience. We need to be prepared for whatever His answer is. And sometimes, you know, the best answer is no. He's not going to grant it. Because He knows from the beginning to the end, the Alpha and the Omega, He knows what's best for us. And sometimes the best prayer is an unanswered prayer. The no. And you know, we're we're so selfish and stuff and we always want it our way. Again, maybe I'm speaking for myself. But we always, you know, being impatient, we want and we want things our way always. When we ask for a prayer to be answered, we want the special job. Or we want whatever. And we've got to just truly seek the Lord and what the answer He gives us, we need to be prepared for. And we need to be prepared to step out in obedience for it. Second Peter 1, 3 through 11. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a good, a godly life. We have received all this by coming to know Him, the One who called us to Himself by means of His marvelous glory and excitement. And because of His glory and excitement, He has given us great and precious promises. These promises that enable you to share the divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. It's hard sometimes when we seek the Lord and we, we think He's not listening to us, but He gives us everything we need. He stands solid as a rock. His Word is the truth, and He's always there for us. Sometimes we think He's not, and we only see one set of footsteps in the sand. That's because He's carrying us. We just have to, you know, always be there and trust in the Lord. 
In view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness and godliness with brotherly affection and brotherly affection with love for everyone. We read this to think of, look at how the progression of this is. The God promise is always there and His faithfulness for us is there. But how we need to step out in moral excellence. How we need to watch what we do. How we live. We need to continue to guard ourselves. And that, again, back to the, the, the armor, putting on the armor and the helmet of salvation. Satan can tax us through our mind, our senses. And having the helmet of salvation on helps guard us. And so that's why it's so important to always put on the spiritual armor because we are attacked. And to beat strongholds, we always need to be turning to the Lord and the Holy Spirit to help lift us up so that we can live a righteous life, so we can walk in obedience to the Lord. As we live in knowledge and read and study the, the Word, as we're studying the Word, it helps us to walk in righteousness because we're in the Word, we know the Word, and knowing the truth of the Lord. It helps us with self-control. As we're walking in the Lord, it helps us to do what is righteous so we can live righteous lives, so the Lord can bless us. Back to the patience and endurance. It's so hard for us in this life. Here we're, all our modern conveniences, we're so impatient. We want answers right now. We want the microwave to hurry up and cook our two, two minute dinner. We look back, it used to take as long to reheat leftovers and it didn't make them. It's 20 minutes. Well, maybe that's before my time, but. <laughs> <laughs> I remember seeing my mom doing leftovers <laughs> and how long it would take, you know, and, and how blessed the, the microwave was so we could get into our busy lives and, and chasing around in circles. Seems like we're constantly running in circles. There's so many things that get in the way. With endurance, godliness. With godliness, brotherly affection. We need to be lifting our brothers up. Out there in this world, there's so many things that come against each of us. And we need to be there for our brothers. Lifting them up in times of trials, in times of need. The endurance that we need, we, we have to have the brotherly love lifting us up each and every day. As we are filled with the, the Holy Spirit, we are to go out and to empty it each day. And we need to be refilled and replenished. And the brotherly love that we have within the church and other Christians, we need to be there for each other. Some days we have more and we're able to fill others. Other days we need other people to fill us. We all have different seasons. And sometimes the season where we're completely drained, our money's drained, we need other people to step in and fill the gaps. Other times we're the ones that are blessed and we need to step in and fill the gap of others. Hallelujah. So we need to be there for each other. Also love of everyone. This includes your enemy because everyone, even as secular, the non-believers can love their friends. But it's really difficult to love your enemies. Nothing about living for the Lord is easy. He sacrificed everything for us. How much sacrifice do you have for Him? It's, 
difficult, we go through challenges, it's like, oh, the Lord must not be with me. But the Lord's there to build you, and the challenges build you to step out in the Lord. The trials are to build you, to build your faith in the Lord so that you're ready for the really hard times. The Lord suffered. We're to suffer in His name. We're to live in His name. There's nothing easy about being a Christian. Persecuted. If someone finds out you're a Christian, sometimes you can be taken out on you at work. You can be harassed, picked on. You can end up giving up your job because of the harassment or being picked on or persecuted. The United States, we have it easy. This state, the United States, was formed on Christianity. It's, it's turning very fast, and we need to be living in the Lord and praying for our United States, praying for our government, praying that we continue to have the freedom to meet here. If you're in China, we wouldn't have a we wouldn't be able to meet. We'd be more underground than the in the bar. <laughs> we'd be, you know, Bible study we 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 joke about being underground you know, doing it in the basement. It's my choice that we're doing it here. If we're in China, Russia, there's Iran, we wouldn't be talking openly. We wouldn't be able to praise openly. And thank God that we're here in this country that we're able to meet and, and fellowship openly for the Lord and live for the Lord. But times are changing. Be prepared. There's talk of, uh, I think Lorraine just showed me where a bunch of Muslims that had stoned Christians here in the United States. We're losing our freedoms every day. And in the last days, as it talks, we will be persecuted. You look in Africa, Christians are persecuted. It's not new. They've been living with that for a long time. It's happening more and more in the United States. We need to stand up. We need to be praying for the United States. We need to be praying for our government. When, when we go to in prayer, we can't just... We need to be living righteously. We want to be blessed and we want God to hear our prayers. When we pray for ourselves, when we pray for our brothers in the hospital, we want to turn to the Lord and ask for forgiveness of our sins. We need to be in prayer and righteous. And we do that by accepting the Lord as Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And we, pray, we place our sin upon the cross that he died on. He was crucified on the cross. He lived a righteous life. And he was crucified for our sins. Our sins are what held him there. We need to place our sins upon him, upon the cross, and take his righteousness. And as we do that, we're righteous in front of God. And we need to live to, to always take the sin off and get rid of the sin. And so we can always walk a righteous life. We need to turn from sin so God can bless us. <clears throat> so when we go to the Lord in prayer, we can have fulfilled prayers. We can have the Lord blessing us and not turning from us. Don't beat yourself up over sin. If you sin, we all sin. We're all trying to work to be righteous and to live godly lives. We need to not beat ourselves up. Know that the Lord gave His blood for our sins. And we just need to keep calling upon the Holy Spirit so we can turn from our sins, to overcome our sins, to, to pray on the armor, the helmet of salvation, and the whole armor, the full armor, so we can live righteous lives. So we can step out in obedience and, and do the work, the good work for the Lord. That's our message for today. Um, you know, Rich is going to come up here in a minute. I think we're going to have the ladies start to come up here in a little bit. Uh, we have a uh, offering bucket over here. Just a quick reminder on the offering that we have a lot on the offering that goes out. 
and things the last report Jim has was 46% 40%, of what comes into this church goes out in offering. It goes out to Crystalis House, which we support. It goes out to our ministry in Haiti. It goes out to benevolence here within locally. It goes out to the rescue mission. You know, it makes a lot of things possible. We were, with all the stuff going on this week, we were able to go out to Hope House yesterday. Hallelujah. And Bob, the band, the band of believers were out there. They're putting on a concert. It was a free concert. And it was just amazing to watch these kids and the blessing that they gave us. And Bob, you know, the blessing that they were giving everybody. It, these kids, they come from broken homes. They come from abuse. They come from things that we don't even want to think about that's happening out there. And to, to see these kids raising their hands and praising the Lord and just dancing and living for the Lord was truly amazing and truly a blessing to me. So I just asked you guys, you know, do what you can to get out and do your ministry. That's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to be filled here in church and then we're to go out and we're to live Christian lives and we're to go out and to be ministers out into this dark. We're to be light in this darkness. Thank you. <laughs>